William Foster wants to die. Terminally ill with a neurological disease, paralyzed from the neck down, he has survived this way for nearly a year. I want to end a quality of my life's existence. William Foster wants to die, but he can't because no one will help him disconnect the respirator. His wife won't for religious reasons. And she feels that it's wrong. To do what I want to do. The hospital won't for legal reasons. While it recognizes the patient's right to refuse treatment, it's afraid of being sued as an accomplice to suicide. A son, Bernard, has emotional reasons for wanting his father to stay alive. I, I didn't want him to die because I felt that there may be some kind of hope or something that he'd get well. Mr. Foster needed a lawyer to fight for his right to die. Mr. Foster has a fatal disease. He's artificially being kept alive. It's his disease. And he ought to be allowed to die of it. Foster's lawyer cites as a precedent a similar case in Florida. A 73-year-old mentally alert but terminally ill patient wanted to end his life against his family's wishes. The judge found in favor of the patient's wishes and ordered the respirator removed. But the attending physician in that case, Marshall Brummer, disagreed, believing that a doctor's job is to keep death away from the living. To take away that, that last bit of hope is, uh, uh, is wrong, and it's a betrayal of trust. Hospitals are not prisons, and doctors are not wardens. If that patient really, truly wants to die, that patient has the right to, to go home. But many patients are confined to their hospital beds. Does this loss of freedom of movement, then, mean a loss of freedom of choice? William Foster's mind has made the decision to die. But because others control his body, others are deciding his fate in a heated legal battle. The hospital is demanding a court order to discontinue treatment. The wife and one son of a family divided on the issue have hired their own lawyer to keep Foster alive. And sometimes it takes somebody who's not emotionally involved, who's, who's objective, to make a decision. And perhaps it's just as well. Even if it's against his wishes? Certainly if it's against his wishes. The legal battle stretched on for two months, and a federal judge eventually found in favor of Mr. Foster's wish that his respirator be disconnected. But the court delayed implementing the order, and William Foster died still on the machine he sought to be free of.